Hey everyone, this is Dr. Drizzle and welcome to the National Parks Expedition Challenge. Today, we're in Joshua Tree National Park in Southern California. I am so excited to introduce my new friend to you, Ranger Christian, how are <laughs> very you? Very well, very well, nice yeah. to meet you. So, thanks for inviting us to your place. Sure. It's very nice around here. Yeah. So, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get to this uh, particular park? Um, well, I guess this, when I got out of the Peace Corps in 2011, um, I had a special hiring status called non-competitive eligibility, and it helped me get government jobs. Like it put me at the top of the list for some jobs, and I, part of the reason I joined the Peace Corps was to get a job as a National Park Service Ranger, and it worked. Right. Um, so yeah, I was fortunate. When I got back um, from my service, I was just calling all of the parks that I wanted to work at and telling them, you know, how easy I was to hire and describing my special eligibility because many of them weren't familiar with it and Joshua Tree just happened to have a job so I ended up here pretty randomly. And you've been here eight years? Almost eight years in November. Okay. Yeah. So before the Peace Corps, what was your education background? Um, I got a bachelor's degree in parks and recreation management from West Virginia University and got a master's degree in resource uh, interpretation at Stephen F. Austin in Texas. So you've been around quite a lot because I hear that you're originally from Pittsburgh. Yes, yeah, I lived in Pittsburgh for the first 18 years of my life before I went to school in, in West Virginia. So yeah. how did you um, acclimate from Pittsburgh weather to out here in the desert? Has it been hard? You know, I came from Fiji here, so I was in Fiji for two years. So yeah, it was a tropical, um, maybe about 19 degrees south of the equator and just a wet and a dry season. So. Um, it wasn't hot um, most of the year, but the heat here is something to adjust to. You know, here at headquarters, it gets up to 117, but it's, it is a dry heat, so I enjoy not getting uh, super sweaty all the time when you go outside, but very different from Pittsburgh, yeah. Very cool, and I have to agree with them that uh, it's not too hot, even though you see the numbers rise. We've been out here a couple of days, and it actually feels pretty good, and if there's a breeze, it's really nice. It's especially nice in the shade, like we are now. Yes, so, we're in yeah. the shade right now. <laughs> So um, this is not a Joshua tree. No, this is a California fan palm. So a lot of uh, questions that our kids are probably gonna have is what actually is a Joshua tree? Um, a Joshua tree, so you could accurately call it a yucca tree. You know, it's a yucca, it's in the yucca genus. Its scientific name is yucca brevifolia. So calling it a yucca tree would be accurate. And a, a lot, I, I frequently get um, a question about you know, is a Joshua tree actually a tree? But there is no real scientific definition of a tree. Um, so there's no like special um, taxonomic category for trees. So if you want to call it a tree, anything with a straight woody trunk uh, that branches uh, is considered a tree. So yeah, in my mind, uh, Joshua trees are, are trees, but they don't produce real wood, like actual, um, like, like an oak tree, for instance, okay. or a sycamore or something like that. They, they, they are different in a way. Okay. Yeah. Well, so Joshua Tree National Park. Tell us a little bit about the history of this park. Um, so this has been protected since 1936. It became a national monument in 1936. It did not achieve national park status until 1994. Um, but there's a very special woman named uh, Minerva Hamilton Hoyt that lobbied powerful people in the government for many, many years to get this part of the Mojave Desert protected. And, and she actually pulled it off. It became um, a national monument in 1936. She, she observed many people from um, the new growing city of Los Angeles coming out here to the desert and, and digging up a lot of cacti and really beautiful desert plants and taking them back to Los Angeles for mm -hmm. their yard. So it re really bothered her. And, and so she went on this crusade to get this area protected and she actually pulled it off. Yeah. And then it became a national park? In 1994. With the Desert Protection Act. Okay. Yeah. So talking about the plants that they would dig up and take back, what are the main plants here? What would we find if we walk out into the park? There's 11 different species of cacti in the park. Um, probably the most well-known one is the Choya cactus or the teddy bear Choya cactus. Um, if you ever come to Joshua Tree, you have to go to the, uh, the Choya garden with over close to 200,000 teddy bear Choya in, in one place. But obviously Joshua Trees... Um, teddy bear choya, many different species of choya, um, prickly pear cacti. Um, yeah, I would say those are the most 
Those are the most well-known plants uh, here. We have almost 800 different species of plants in this park, wow. which surprises people, yeah. Well, so what about the animals? What could we expect to see or um, be careful from? Um, you know, a lot of visitors are afraid of snakes, but it, in, in my mind, it, it's not really a rational fear. It's kind of, be, it's kind of like being afraid of, of sharks in the ocean. Um, we have seven different species of rattlesnakes, and in eight years here, I've never heard of a negative encounter with a snake, let alone a bite. You know, we can't guarantee that no one, but no one has reported a rattlesnake bite um, here in Joshua Tree National Park as long as I've been here. And like I tell folks, really, the, the only way to get bit by a snake is to pick it up. You know, if you pick the snake up, it'll bite you. But other than that, they're not, in, they're not interested in people. Their venom is not meant for humans. It's meant for prey that is small enough to swallow, and we don't, we don't fit that. Uh, description. So I, I, I tell people if you see a rattlesnake, um, you know you're lucky. They're really, really beautiful. And um, we have a, a, a lot of folks are also afraid of scorpions. Um, we don't have venomous scorpions here in California. That's a different story in Arizona. But um, yeah, we don't have uh, really any issues with wildlife in Joshua Tree um, like they do, for instance, in Sequoia with bears. Um, but we, we don't really have any, any issues with that. Um, probably the most famous animal is a tortoise. That's, that's high on people's that. list, and a bighorn sheep. Yeah, that's very high on people's list coming here. So how big are the tortoise? Um, tortoises, uh, probably about that big at the biggest. You know, they do live here in the Mojave Desert, so there's not a great amount of food or water available, so they don't get um, to a massive size like a tortoise in the Galapagos or in, or in Africa. They're not, that, they're not that big. Well, talk to me a little bit about the climate here. Um, so our, our season is the opposite of most national parks. We receive most of our visitors from October through April. So October through April, it, it's, it's nice and cool. You know, right now here in early September, it's pretty nice right now, but it's unseasonably cool today. But, you know, yesterday it was 102 here at headquarters. And um, it hovers right around 100 from June through like the middle of September. So that's when we uh, have our fewest amount of visitors. But um, a typical winter day here, for instance, in like December or January, the highs are in the high 50s, low 60s, and right around freezing at night. So it, it's cold at night, believe it or not. Uh, but we're in the high desert here. You know, so high desert um, means high elevation. And, and, and we can have very, very cold winters, especially when the sun goes down. What is uh, your favorite thing about Joshua Tree? Um, I like the Wonderland of Rocks. It's about 12 square miles um, of just rocks, just massive um, monzogranitic boulders, and there are no trails there. You could never build a trail there. It's not really possible, but um, if you're comfortable navigating off trail and, and, and you're fit, you can explore the Wonderland of Rocks and never really see another person. So um, the Wonderland of Rocks is, is, in my opinion, the most special part uh, place in Joshua Tree National Park, but not easily accessible. Okay. Yeah. Well, how big is the park then? It's roughly the size of Rhode Island. Okay, oh. so it's about 800,000 acres or about 100 miles east to west and about 50 miles north to south. Is there any history about who, were, who inhabited this area before um, it became a national monument? Yeah, I mean, native people lived here for thousands of years. Uh, the Cahuilla, the Serrano, the Chemehuevi, and the Mojave are, are four of the tribes that called Joshua Tree National Park home. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of Native American um, evidence of their presence here. And they still live all around the park, you know, in, in Palm Springs, in 29 Palms. So they're, they're, they're still definitely a, a presence and they have a voice in the management of Joshua Tree National Park today. So I know that you're a geologist. You like that whole piece of rock. So tell me a little bit about the geology of the park. So yeah, I, I'm an amateur geologist, um, it, it, but it's definitely a hobby of mine. Uh, and, and in my opinion, this park could easily be called Jumbo Rocks National Park, and that would be an accurate um, you know, description of this park, because in my opinion, like the rocks are the most special thing um, about this park. Um, you can see Joshua trees in four different states, but the massive piles of monzogranitic boulders that we have here are, are something you really can't see um, anywhere else. Uh, most of them are of Mesozoic age, you know, somewhere between 66 and 250 million years old, um, which is not that old for rocks. They're kind of like teenager rocks. Um, but uh, I think having the, the rocks here makes it one of the best parks for kids because rock scrambling and just climbing around on the rocks and playing on the rocks um, is probably the, the most fun activity for children that come to 
uh, Joshua Tree National Park. And it's a good place to learn as well because the really dry, arid climate um, results in the rocks not being covered up in soil. If it, was, if it was wet here, the rocks would all be covered up in soil, but the very dry climate you know, reveals them on the surface so they're easily studied. You can, it's like an outdoor classroom out there as far as geology goes. So besides rock scrambling and learning about rocks, what are some other activities people can do if they visit this park? Um, well, I mean, the driving tour is nice. You know, you could drive for probably three hours on paved roads in this park, and there's a lot of exhibits to pull um, and, and stops to pull off and, and learn something about the park. Um, you know, there's a lot of picnicking in the park. We have eight campgrounds with close to 500 campsites um, and about 250 miles of hiking trails in this national park. So, um, oh, but I, I should have mentioned rock climbing. You know, this is, this is a world-class rock climbing destination. So we get people from all over the world who come here to technical rock climb. And a lot of people live here in the Morongo Basin um, just to be near, you know, the thousands of technical climbing routes we have inside the national park. And you yeah. also have some artistic uh, connections because as we know, um, U2 was here and Bono, they mm -hmm. have a, a special album, Joshua Tree. Have you ever met him or has he been in the park when you were uh, around? No, no, but I mean a lot of people that come to the park are wearing U2 t-shirts. They're listening to the Joshua Tree album when they go in the park. Um, but it's funny, the, the cover of that album, the Joshua Tree on the cover of that album is actually in Death Valley National Park. Um, so it, it's, it's one of those misconceptions um, um, about U2 and this park, but they were inspired when they came here by their experience in Joshua Tree National Park. It's just that cover photo actually is not from the park. A little piece of information yeah. that you may not have known, but we're <laughs> going to give it to you free. So I have seen a couple signs here that says, do not die today in the park. So what are some um, things that we need to know if we're going to go out on a hike here? Um, probably the number one rule is that you have to tell somebody where you're going and what your plan is. So you tell your friend or your family member that hey, I'm going to go hike Ryan Mountain, and if you don't hear from me by 7 p.m., something might be wrong. So um, you have to have like a buddy that you check in with uh, so that they know that this is our, our, our panic time. If you don't hear from me by this time, then you need to call the park and, and let search and rescue know so they can, they can look into it. Yeah, and also, you know, drinking lots of water. Uh, when your water is halfway gone, you turn around on the trail. Um, but, you, you know, there's a lot of live and learn when it comes to how to prepare for, for hiking in the desert, like how to dress properly. Most visitors, um, well not most visitors, but many visitors don't dress properly when they come to the desert. Um, they show too much skin. They wear shorts and tank tops and they expose their skin to the uh, uh, damaging sunlight. So uh, one thing is dressing properly with, with long sleeves, long pants, and loose fitting clothing. All right. So that leads us to our engineering challenge. So we know in order to survive here at the Joshua Tree National Park or in any high de desert land, we need to be prepared. So we're going to ask you to prototype a new type of water canteen. Now this water canteen must be light. It must be foolproof. It's going to hold all the water that you put in it. And let's come up with some different type of um, invention part where it actually feeds you the water, whether it's coming up over your shoulder like you've seen advertised on TV or it comes up through your shirt, or it comes when you clap your hands, or it feels the um, temperature of your body and knows that you need a little ounce of water to go inside. But this is going to be all up to you, a new type of um, water contraption to survive in the high desert. And we will uh, attribute that all to uh, Joshua Tree National Park. So we're going to tag at Dacia92 and hashtag Nat Park Challenge. So Christian, before we leave, can you tell these kids that are sitting in their classrooms right now what they could start doing right now to be preparing themselves to be taking over your job in a couple years? Um, I guess, the, well, the first thing I would do is decide what division you want to work in. You know, if you want to work for the National Park Service, do you want to be an interpreter like me, someone who does public speaking and leads ranger programs? Um, or do you want to be a scientist? Do you want to work in resources and study the plants and animals? Um, do you want to work in maintenance? Um, do you want to work in administration? So know what division uh, you want to work in. And if you want to be an interpreter like me, um, probably the best thing you can do is uh, become a, a dedicated naturalist. You know, 
learn as much as you can about natural history and earth sciences um, and, 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 and study possibly geology in college or study biology or, or um, desert ecology um, um, in college, but you need to get that bachelor's degree uh, if you want to be uh, an interpreter for the National Park Service. So that means right now, keep working on those science skills and those communication skills because you too can be a park ranger at Joshua Tree National Park. Christian, thank you so much for coming today. Yeah, my pleasure. And, and we are excited to be here. It's a little hot, but still nothing, nothing horrible. My Weather Channel alert said that um, it was not going to be as hot today as they originally um, expected it to be. So that's a good thing. It's almost like a, a breeze coming through. So thanks everyone for joining us today at the Joshua Tree National Park. Um, and thanks for joining us on our National Parks Expedition Challenge. This is Dr. Drizzle, out.